This looks probably looks like a fucking 80s dad fit. Everyone get in the RV. We're going on a family vacation. I'm trying this standing up thing because it kind of feels like more energizing. This is why stand up comedians do stand up comedy, I think. This video is I haven't even done an intro. Hi everybody and welcome back if you've been here before. <laughs> is this gonna be my new intro? Not really sure. But I am Lil Pewdie and Hitcher. That's it. We're in. We're in the video now. So, okay, so here's the thing. I'm going right off the cuff for this one because I feel like I can't put to words my thoughts of this phenomenon that I'm gonna talk about. This phenomenon has found new life on TikTok, but it is nowhere near a new thing. I don't know how else to... Men coming up to women in the streets and just talking to them. That's the thing. But on TikTok, it's called the approach or the cold approach. With respect to the gods of yore, it is pickup artistry. It doesn't exist in a bubble. Like pickup artistry isn't something you only see annoying YouTubers or like dudes who fucking go up to people with their iPhones like this. Like it's... It's got historical roots and men just did this to people like back in back in my day men just did this to people without even having cameras pointed at them i am a victim of this crime against humanity i am no stranger to having a man come up to me in the street and i do my darndest to give body language or give some sort of non-verbal signal that i am not interested in whatever his approach is whatever his lines are going to be like i think we need to um maybe coach these men through it all the different techniques have been used on me and i've in turn used my own techniques you know i am gay i have a girlfriend i'm not interested in men i only kiss women that doesn't work <laughs> to that they say but i'm different or something stupid like that. Like, I don't know what it is with straight men. If a person is like, I am attracted to a different gender than what you are, they go, well, that's just a challenge. It's not a challenge. I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, another classic trick that has uh, been used on myself, uh, the classic thing of, can I have your number? Uh, I said no. I said no several times for so this particular time this guy was very persistent so he says can I have your number you just give him a random number you just give him like a random amalgamation of numbers they have something to combat that with oh cool I'll call it right now so you have my number in your phone so that doesn't work you can tell a man you're not interested you can tell a man you have a boyfriend you have a girlfriend you can tell a man I don't even have genitals down there I am like a Barbie doll do you know what he says back to that I just want to be your friend. Why? I don't fucking know you. I don't know who you are. The thing with friends is that you can pick them. And it's maybe not that simple, but every time I make friends with someone, it is not through coercion, which is a crazy concept. And then I've had the classic, man follows me to my workplace. So now he knows where I work. So now he can access me nine to five, Monday to Friday, essentially. Yeah, they do it all. They're learning in a wrong way. So maybe I thought I could look at some of some of the TikTok videos that I've seen everywhere at this point and offer maybe some advice. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. You catch girls interested in you when you respect their boundaries instead of trying to insert yourself into their lives in a really annoying and uncomfortable way. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I can help you men of TikTok. Oh my God, my cat will not relent. Why do I speak like this? He will not yield, he will not relent. He will not falter. I'm not gonna lie. I don't use TikTok that often and I'm not saying that as like, I'm offline and I'm cool because I don't use the internet. I just know that TikTok is like doing heroin for me. So um, the best way to not get addicted to heroin is you just don't do it, you know? But I have it. And I've got a lot of friend requests. Oh my God. I mean, there's a hashtag. There's also a few accounts that I have been familiarized with. So we're going to watch a few of those and just let's see if we can just offer some alternative options. 
Okay, so the first video that I saw, I think maybe on like a, a podcast or something, was this guy called Daniel Arena. His thing is, is just the, the approach, but the cold approach is basically the same thing. Alexa, can you define the cold approach for me? Here's something I found on the web. According to B2MarketingZone.com, cold calling is the process of approaching prospective customers or clients typically via telephone, who are not expecting such an interaction. So it's the same technique as telemarketing. What happens when you approach a cute girl in public? Excuse me. Hi. Hi. Don't panic. I'm going to stop before he even says anything. Body language. This is something I've had to learn through the school of hard knocks of being autistic, but body language says a lot. When you're walking up to a woman, shoulders hunched, like a goblin she's not gonna think you're anything other than a fucking goblin i did this uh corporate training thing at my job one of the things they said to boost your confidence is your posture not that i'm like saying you should still go up to women and talk to them on the street as long as you have good posture bad body language i'm not a crazy person oh, it's fine. this is gonna sound random but i think you're super cute i had to introduce myself oh uncomfortable just awkward not to take a low shot but what is this outfit? This, it's like a man bun, but he's got a receding hairline. No offense to anyone who has a receding hairline, you are a king. But the combo here, V-neck, sky blue shirt, and no legs. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not doing a fucking camouflage. He's got camouflage pants on. Bad fit. Hi. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm Tia. Tia, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Does Tia have a boyfriend? Ugh. Does Tia have a boyfriend? Is she a five-year-old? Are you talking to her like she's a five-year-old? What the? Um, next tip. Don't talk to someone in a really patronizing manner using a third person kind of thing. Don't talk to them like, is, is T ready to put her toys away and come to dinner? Like, ew, disgusting. Don't talk to anybody like that. Don't even talk to five-year-olds like that. I'm pretty sure there's like studies that say if you talk to anyone, including babies, in a weird patronizing tone. I'm pretty sure they hate you. I'm pretty sure that's what the data said. Uh, is Tia on the market? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's complicated. Hey, that, I was you like a month ago. Let me decode the woman's body language here. No, she's not interested. That's her saying she's not interested. She's saying I'm single, but I'm not interested. I can't believe I have to explain this, but there is such a thing as preference and attraction based on preference. You might have the best lines you might have the most confident body language you might have a fit that actually looks good but like at the end of the day if you are not attractive to this person they're not they might not be interested you know some people are different but i'm gonna say like 80 percent of the time if you're not attractive to a person they're not going to be interested no matter what you say oh, you gotta like work on yourself right yeah no i actually I'm actually married but i just moved into my own place because we're going through the process. Got it. Yeah. Makes sense. So it's, you know. Awesome. Yeah. But well, look, I get it. It's different points in people's lives, right? Right. But thank you, though. Well, it was really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah, have a good one. Rejection is normal, y'all. Like, yeah, rejection is normal. It's, you're gonna get rejected pretty much every time you do this, though. Like, there are times and places where this is appropriate and times and places where it's inappropriate. And I can guarantee that pretty much every time and place that this dude posts on his TikTok is inappropriate. If I'm sitting in a food, what well, looks like a food court here, I'm maybe on my lunch break, I may be waiting for someone, I may be just shopping by myself. The last thing I want in that food court is a stranger to come up to me, any stranger. This may sound very like antisocial, but the thing about that is that humans have boundaries and we're allowed to set those boundaries. We're allowed to have certain periods of time where we don't want strangers talking to us. And that's like totally fine. I can guarantee she wasn't sitting there thinking, I hope some cute hunky guy with a receding hairline and a man bun comes up and talks to me even though I'm clearly going through a separation right now and I have to awkwardly explain that to a stranger because he's propositioned me you know all right let's look at another one what happens when you approach a cute girl in public? excuse me hi don't panic I'm not a crazy person this is gonna sound random here's the thing he looks like the kind of dude who like drinks kombucha and does yoga and there's nothing wrong with that kind of person. Anyways, 
I have fit critique yet again, but it's just maybe the fact this guy owns way too many blue shirts. Alexa, what does blue mean in like psychology? Here's something I found on the web. According to connectnigeria.com, blue is associated with calmness and security, intelligence, communication, trust, efficiency, serenity, duty, logic, coolness, reflection. That's a lot. That's a lot for one color to like be expected to uphold. But I think you were super cute. I had introduced myself. Thank you. I'm Daniel. Hannah. Hannah. Positive comments. I do commend him on his respectful distancing. Nice to meet you. Does Hannah have a boyfriend? Again, talking to her in third person like she's a fucking baby. Good ones always do. <laughs> well, hey, it was very nice to meet you. Well, nice, to meet nice to meet you too, yeah. Thank you for being cool. I don't know how that conversation went. Maybe she's just a very nice, sociable person, but I'm going to assume he gets rejected. Oh, he approaching you. <laughs> Rejection <laughs> is good normally one. off. There you go. He got rejected. What a surprise. Again, it seems like she's in a food court and she's eating and she's just been shopping. Leave her alone. You know, if she was at like a pub or like, what do they call it in like America? Like a bar or nightclub or some sort of like evening themed thing, maybe then would be an appropriate time to approach her because people are more open to socializing when they're drinking. But also in those environments, they're more open to socializing with people just more in general they're more comfortable with having strangers come up to talk to them that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful because i have had men hit on me in nightclubs look one more at this guy and then i will look at another account who doesn't have as respectful approach what happens when you approach a cute girl in public respectful distance bad posture no blue shirt this time switching it up alexa what does gray mean in psychology here's something i found on the web According to Cognifit.com, according to color psychology, gray mainly symbolizes old age and sobriety. Gray does not have as much going on for it as blue does. Excuse me. Hi. Don't panic. I'm not a crazy person. This is going to sound this random. This is going to sound random. I think you're super cute. I had to introduce myself. But I think you're super cute. Sorry? Is something I would imagine a 12 year old saying in like the schoolyard at lunchtime to a girl who is also 12 years old. Thank you. I'm Daniel. Does it, nice to meet you. Does Addison have a boyfriend? I do, yeah. Good ones always do. Well, was very nice. I want to try and decode women's body language for a second here because maybe you guys just aren't understanding the subtle cues of how women respond. And it's, it's in inflection, it's in tone. Thank you. Not interested. Uh, I'm only saying thank you because it is deemed the polite thing to do in this instance. If she was like, oh my god, thank you, that'd be different, but thank you is thanks, now move on. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Great you too. Rejection is normally on. Oh, hashtag over 40. This man is too old to be doing this, I think. I think stick, get back on Tinder or Bumble or Hinge or grinder no maybe not grinder get back on the dating apps because i think that's where you're going to have success i th you're trying to teach us a lesson here that rejection is normal why don't you just try and date someone in like a normal setting that is appropriate like the whole point of dating apps is everyone's here everyone's consenting to the reason they're here they want to go on dates or they want to do other stuff in private you know if you message someone on tinder and go hey i think you're cute you're gonna automatically your chances of success are doubled i don't know the statistics here but that's why she's on the app when she's sitting at a cafe by herself she wants to be left alone i don't know why i have to keep explaining this you maybe need to sit down with someone and rework your opening because it's it's not good saying i'm not a crazy person do you know what that does so that's this thing i learned when i was working in retail we did like this training course and they said Never say to a customer, no worries or no problem, because even though you've set it up with the no in front of it, they still hear worries, problem. You know what I'm saying? So when he says, I'm not a creep or like, don't be scared, I'm not a creep. All she's hearing is creep. I'm a creep. Be scared. You know, like it's, it's a psychology thing. You are planting those seeds and I can guarantee it's never going to be successful. I can't hear the word random and not think of like 2012 era Tumblr, like, or like MySpace, like 
eh. dinosaur says raw eh. i'm so random like yeah rejection is normal but also like going up to someone while they're like trying to be alone and and have time to themselves is not normal it's like intrusive and weird anyways the next account i'm going to look at i would say he's like the chaotic version of mr daniel arena uh this is confident chris i just want to preface before i even open up his tiktok he is transphobic i unfortunately when i was doing research for this and by research i mean just checking out what the content was i did stumble across some transphobia we don't like confident chris and i think that's already established but we'll have a look and maybe offer some advice for him meow you're like the prettiest woman i've seen today thank you yeah are you am i the most handsome guy you've seen today or? i'm not gonna try to talk about it you know thank you appreciate your compliment you're like she wants you far away from her you know that like i can tell by the way he's talking to her he knows that she doesn't want to talk to him and that's maybe worse because she's got big bobbies and i think that's the only reason the video is still continuing I broke up with my girlfriend like three days ago you want to be like my rebound I broke up with my girlfriend like three days ago okay i'm like this guy is approaching bad faith what else would a woman say to that other than fuck off and you notice that he doesn't include her response because it was probably fuck off. Do you need help with your car? Huh? I'll take your car if I if I get your number. Yeah. No, sorry. Ah, uh, <laughs> then I don't want the car. Okay. Yeah. Ew. This dude is not aiming for success. I can tell you that much. I just get that vibe that he doesn't respect women at all. Hey, how lost are you from like one through ten? How lost are you from like one through ten? You lost. She looks like a high school student. Get away from her, you fucking creep. I think confidence and annoyingness can be confused for one another. What's going on right here? Is it, it's a food place or? It's food. I what a whiplash, like going from someone who looks like objectively too young to someone who looks like the same age as my mom. I already like Daniel Arena 10 times more than I like this dude because he's, it's so obvious that he's like doing the uh, the very early 2000s pickup artists kind of thing where they insult a woman or ask her a question that has nothing to do with like her they'll, yeah you know they'll just neg her you know the classic art of negging like they'll they'll just say something to her or say something really obtuse that she like has to respond because it's like why did you say that a thing i learned <laughs> from watching that mtv or what's the other one vh1 show the pickup artist show. I don't remember what it's called, probably pickup artists. They gave guys like random openers. So one of the, the, the main one I remember was they would go up to a woman and be like, do you brush or floss first? Which I would answer. But the other thing about that show was they were done in nightclubs in an appropriate setting, you know, like not just a woman at the self-serve checkout at like her local supermarket or sitting at a, in a food court on her lunch break or like while she's on a solo shopping spree. The pickup artists of long ago had at least the wherewithal to know when an appropriate time to talk to a woman is at least. They weren't good at it and it was always creepy but at least they had one thing right and hey maybe the opener thing is pretty good because it does get a conversation going so what are what are our takeaways here one posture no actually number one rule is time and place for me that is the height if we're looking at this as like a hierarchy of steps time and place is like the number one rule if you approach a woman at the wrong time and place, no matter how good your game is, she is probably going to find you annoying, inconvenient, go away because boundaries. Number one, time and place. Number two, understand boundaries. Daniel Arena at least respected boundaries in some degree, although he didn't respect them in other degrees because he was approaching people at times where they were not open for discussion. Well, Scratch that. Let's let's go back to the start. So number one rule would just be to like not approach women in public unless they are <laughs> giving signs. So what would the signs be? Open body language. I don't know what that actually looks like. Maybe I'll Google it. Are you fucking kidding me? My screen recording failed. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I'm gonna fucking cry. 
I'm gonna have to figure it out. Oh my god, my screen recording failed. Alright, let's start this. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. I can. My TikTok locked me out. Oh my fucking god. My body heat just like spiked when I realized that my that that screen recording didn't work. I think my whole like immune system just shut down. It's fine, dude. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Although, no, no, no. We'll figure it out. It's okay. I am so annoyed. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> to the men of TikTok, all I can say is let's just stop. There's nothing I can teach you. But also, if a woman is interested in you and interested in talking to you, she will show it in her body language, in her eye contact, in the way she responds. I know these things are hard to wrap your head around because not everyone is able to pick up on those cues. I can't lie, I'm not great at it. But if you know when she's not interested, then that's better than nothing. Or just get Tinder. Like, it's so simple. It's literally, they've designed something that you can put in your pocket, on your phone, where you can literally tell women they're cute all day long if you really must. I know that the boomers and the Gen Xs out there love to say that, like, dating is different now. But, like, heaps of things are different now to what they used to be. You have some medieval motherfucker come up to you and say... They don't shackle people in the town square to throw tomatoes at them anymore. No one punishes people the same anymore. Like things change. That's just the way time works. Move on, find something real to complain about. Who is texting me? It's my therapist. That's all I had to say. I don't know if I can actually help you, but if this did help you, you can send me $50 because I am a lifestyle coach now. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again. And if you do come back, I'll see you somewhere in the future. So bye.